All right, uh, in this video, we're going to see how to find the resultant vector. And uh, the problem we're looking at in the instructor model, we have an airplane flying west at 425 miles per hour. Wind is blowing from the northeast at 40 miles per hour. And we're asked, what is the ground speed of the airplane in the bearing of the airplane? And the first step in these problems is to draw a diagram if there's not already one drawn there for you. And uh, when you have an object moving like this, like an airplane, you don't really need to draw the airplane. You can just put a point there for the airplane. Um, but if it does help you visualize it, um, you can draw a little sketch of an airplane. It's flying west, so we want to have it pointing uh, to the left. There we go. It's kind of like a shark, but that'll be our airplane. Um, and then we want to draw the vectors for the problem. Um, so we have a vector for the uh, airplane itself. And again, that's going west. And that's uh, 425 miles per hour. And then we have the wind blowing from the northeast, uh, which means it's blowing to the southwest or down and to the left. And uh, it's only 40 miles per hour. So you don't need these to scale, but you do want to make the uh, vector with the larger magnitude have a longer arrow. And then it says to so identify the standard position angle for each vector. So the uh, origin of the axis will be the starting point or initial point for the vectors. Um, and the standard position uh, starts in the uh, to the right and positive x or positive horizontal axis and then goes counterclockwise. So if we measure like that, then the uh, angle here, of course, is just pi or 180 degrees. And um, without knowing any specifics about the uh, angle of the wind, um, blowing from the northeast um, to the southwest, uh, we'll assume that it's 45 degrees between south and west. Um, so in standard position, um, that would be 225 degrees, 180 plus 45. All right, and that's all the information we need from our diagram. We're now ready to go to step two, write out the component form for each vector. So uh, it's nice to use letters for the vectors that are representative of them, but you can also just use U and V. Lowercase letters are usually used for vectors. And so we'll use uh, P for the plane. And uh, the uh, formulas are shown uh, there where the x component is the magnitude of the vector times the cosine of the angle. So the magnitude for the plane is the 425. And then the cosine of the angle is cosine of 180. Uh, and then 425 sine of 180. And of course, cosine of 180 is negative one and sine of 180 is zero. And so it's no surprise that this is just negative 425 in the horizontal and zero in the vertical. And we could have jumped right to that, um, but we'll see with the other vector that we do need those formulas. And we'll use W for the wind. So here we've got 40 is the magnitude for the wind vector. 
and then 225 uh, for the angle. And uh, cosine of 225 is negative 1 over square root of 2. Sine of 225 is pa also negative 1 over square root of 2. And so these both become negative 40 over root 2. And you want to keep these exact because we're going to use those in later calculations. So uh, when you uh, add two vectors, you add them component-wise. So add the two horizontal components, add the two vertical components, and that's what we do in step three. All right, and so we have negative 425 and negative 40 over root 2. And then we have 0 minus negative 40 over root 2. So that's just negative 40 over root 2. Right? And that's our component form of our resultant vector. So for some problems, that's all that you'll need. Um, but we still haven't answered these questions, right? So let's move down to the rest of this. I just try to get my stuff all moved around here. Much work. All right. So uh, step four is to find the magnitude of the resultant vector, um, and you can see that that's just the square root of the sum of the squares, the components, and uh, we have those components. Here, right? So that's x, and that's y, and so the magnitude of p plus w be the square root of the sum of the squares, these components. So at that point, you could put that entire thing into a calculator. Um, and since step four is often a, a final answer type step, um, you can uh, simplify that if you can. But here, uh, you're going to have to approximate it. And I'll have the same units as the magnitudes of the vectors before, which is here, the speed miles per hour. Right. And then with step five, we're going to find the direction of the resultant vector um, using that formula, inverse tangent of y over x, same x and y uh, from the previous formula. And again, you could put that all in the calculator, uh, and you should get about 3.57 degrees. Um, now, this is going to have the usual problems that it does with uh, inverse trig functions. 
um, because there's multiple solutions, even over uh, zero to 360 or zero to two pi. Um, and so, you know, going back to our diagram, the resultant vector um, should be what you get when you add the vectors head to tail, right? So kind of move one vector to start at the end of the other and then draw from the uh, tail of the first one to the head of the second one. So we know that's roughly where the resultant vector should be. Um, and so I'll let you know that it should be uh, bigger than 425, which we did get a number bigger than 425 in step four, um, but also kind of give you an idea that the angle in standard position should be between um, 180 and, one, and 225. And so the 3.57 um, that we're actually getting um, is that angle. The angle drawn from the horizontal. Um, so to get the full angle, we do need to add 180. Um, and so then that would be 183.57. So that's the angle in standard position. All right. Um, so usually the last step in these problems is the validation. Um, this one's a little different because we do have like a step seven where we kind of answer those other questions and interpret the solution. Um, usually I have the validation at the end. We'll go along with this. Um, and I have two techniques of validation you could try here. Um, one uses technology and, uh, kind of follows along with that drawing we just did. Um, so you could do a hand-drawn version, um, but we'll show you how to use GeoGebra for that. Uh, the other one just uses the uh, results of step four and five with the formulas in step three um, to make sure that we get the same results. And so if we just check the uh, horizontal component. So we've put the 454.17 times cosine of 183.57. So this is the magnitude times the cosine of the angle using the results from steps four and five, our answers. Um, put that in your calculator, you should get negative 453.29. Um, and then if you compare that to uh, the x coordinate that we got in step three, uh, you'll see it's it's the same number as negative 425 minus 40 over root two. You can do the same thing with the horizontal or the vertical component. Here you'd use the sine of the angle. And that should give you about 28.28. And that's going to be roughly equal to negative 40 over root 2. So that's one technique. Um, again, the other technique will be doing a vector drawing. Um, but instead of just a kind of a crude hand-drawn sketch, I want to show you how to use technology. Um, there should be a link to the completed uh, The completed GeoGebra graph, but if you just go to geogebra.org slash calculator, there's a link in the course site. Um, we can show you how to quickly throw this together. So you want to start by creating points, which just use capital letters and then put the order pairs in the normal way. Um, we'll start with the origin. And I'll create a point A at the origin and then a point B at where the plane vector would point. 
and then you can see uh, uh, that we don't see B because it's way out there at negative 425. So go to the little gear and do zoom to fit. And then you can kind of quickly zoom out to make that fit. Right, and then uh, we can go ahead and create a vector joining those points right now. Go to Tools, and then go down to More, and then uh, Vector, and it says Select Starting Point, then End Point. So click on Starting Point, and then click on the Ending Point, and you've got yourself uh, a vector there. Uh, and then you can change the name of it by just editing that. And you can change the color in settings. You want to do that. Okay. Uh, and then we'll draw the wind vector by going to point C. And that was negative 40 over square root of 2. Forty over square root of two. And zoom to fit to see that or see. And then again, let's go to vector and we'll do one from A to C. That's our wind vector. Now you want to move the wind vector to start where the plane vector ends, right? Adding them by drawing them kind of head to tail. Um, and to do that, we uh, use a tool called vector from a point. So select the starting point and the vector. So the starting point is B. And then the vector is W. And it will automatically move, create a copy of that vector that starts where the other one ends. All right. And now what we do is we put in our solution, and it should connect point A to point uh, B prime here uh, and kind of complete the, the drawing. And so to put in a vector, um, you just use a lowercase letter and then put the components in uh, parentheses. So it's a lot like a point, but if you use a uppercase letter capital, um, it'll think it's a point. If you use a lowercase letter, it'll think it's a vector. Um, and we won't let us call it P plus W. Um, so I'm just gonna call it uh, V because V hasn't been used yet. Oh, I called it PW in the other one. So I guess that'll work. PW. And put in uh, 454.17 uh, times cosine of 183.57. room here, and then 454.17 sine of 183.57. And you can see that it automatically interpreted that PW as a vector. And of course, it's going to draw that vector starting at the origin, which is what we wanted. And what we're looking for here is that it, it ends at the same point. So this shows that it has the right magnitude and direction um, to match up with the sum of uh, P and W. So that is validation. So if, you know, if we made a mistake and maybe didn't 
convert to standard position, right? It'd be pointing in the wrong direction. Or if we had just the wrong magnitude altogether, um, you could see it wouldn't get to the point. So those would kind of let us know that we made a mistake somewhere and we could find that mistake and correct it before we submitted our work. That's the goal with the validation. Find any mistakes. All right, so we can do it this step seven. State and interpret the resultant vector, refer to original questions, include units. And so you remember that our original questions were, what is the ground speed of the airplane? So that actually was covered in uh, step four. Um, we found that it was uh, 454.17 miles per hour. So that would be the speed of the plane measured from the ground. And then also asked, what was the bearing, um, which is a way of giving the direction in terms of the cardinal directions, like north, south, east, that kind of thing. Um, and you remember from our picture that it was uh, 3.57 degrees if you measured from the west. And so we'd say that's 3.75 degrees south of west. All right, that completes it. So you're ready to go on to the uh, fill in the blanks and your turn examples from this methodology. Uh, let me know if you have any questions.